working on a good quality Scots return to boiler part 5, making the two holes for the superheater mounting, test fitting the parts including the front boiler band and cleaning up the brass strip for the top before painting it using etching primer. Even though they are covered up by the cladding there are two definite holes through the front of the boiler for the superheater mounting and once again I'm using the most excellent of machine tools. I use this 90 degree Proxon motor tool quite a lot. With the exception of the lathes I think this is possibly the best small machine tool that I have. It's very well made, incredibly versatile and gets into places that other drills can't even get near. First of all I drilled a hole through the cladding from the inside using a drill bit of 1 8 of an inch in diameter. Then it was a simple job of just rotating the drill bit and using it as a sort of a milling cutter. You may be wondering why I'm not using an end mill in this small machine tool. Well, I find them to be far too violent. A twist drill cuts the mahogany without the violence. I'm drilling from the inside for two reasons. One is to contain all the mess in one nice pile inside the boiler that can be vacuumed away like this. And it prevents any possibility of the drill bit slipping and marking the mahogany on the external surface. Here I've temporarily put the strip on top of the boiler and I've also put one of the fittings in the hole. This is the fitting that originally held the steam tap but as the steam tap's hand wheel was broken I thought I would use a different method. More about that later on in the video. I need to make two holes through the cladding and here's the second one. Made in exactly the same way using my right angled drill and this hole is for the steam inlet from the wet header. Once again, more about that later on in the video. Cutting the holes in the mahogany like this is pretty good really. It's a great way of doing it because the minute the tone changes, it means that the drill bit is touching the copper so you don't need to proceed any further. The hole that's made in the cladding matches perfectly the hole in the copper of the boiler shell. This brass escutcheon plate needs to be fitted into the hole so I need to enlarge the wooden part of the hole. And to do this I'm using a stepped hole cutter. Although it's starting to cut the copper, the main point is it's cutting a really neat hole in the mahogany. And don't forget I'm not actually drilling into the boiler, this is the smoke box area of the boiler. I really felt that I needed to modify this plate so that it matched the curvature of the boiler. I curved this by fitting it into the vise between two other pieces of brass so it didn't get marked and tapping it gently with a hammer until it curved at both sides. I dismantled the top fitting that originally held the steam valve. Then I drilled and re-threaded this part to take a 3 8 by 32 steam tap. At this stage I thought it was a good idea to rub down the piece of metal that sits on top of the boiler. Some of the paint just didn't want to move, so using the logic that it's definitely stuck to the metal, I left it where it was. Then I took the part into the outer part of the workshop and sprayed it with some high build etching primer. This is really good etching primer and if you look on the can that tells you where I get it from. This is an initial dummy run fitting the steam piping. And just in case any viewers wonder why it's like this, I will explain. This part is the wet header and out of this comes wet steam from the boiler and it goes into this fitting which in turn connects to this superheater coil which is directly in the path of the flame firing through the first flue. This then connects to the outlet, which is the steam tap. By doing it this way, this is a kind of superheater. The heat from the fire dries the steam even further. When I turn the boiler around, you can get the general idea what it's going to look like. I've temporarily fitted the chimney mount, but I still need to fit the water gauge and of course the glass. At this stage I thought I would sit the boiler on the bench and see what it looked like against the Stuart triple expansion engine. Currently it looks a bit low but then the triple expansion engine is sat on a display plinth. And don't forget that the triple expansion engine cylinders are not going to be finished in mahogany. Instead I'm going to fit anodized metal at each side. In this clip I'm cleaning the first of the boiler bands. This is the special one that fits at the front. I started the cleaning process on my polishing spindle and now after using Brasso wadding I'm using a cloth to shine it up. And here I'm fitting it to the boiler. Two nuts and a special long stud pull the banding tight and make it grip the boiler. All of the mahogany strip was cut to the same length more or less at this end. And this boiler band is stepped to fit up against the mahogany. 
and I need to make sure that this is the case. So using a hammer and a piece of mahogany, I tap all around the front of the brass ring. The next part to look at is the smoke box door. This is a substantial casting that's held to the boiler with a special hinge. I rubbed down the existing paintwork that was in quite good condition. That was to key it for this spray paint that's going on it, HMG satin black as usual. I love this paint, it's really good to spray and when it dries it looks the business. It's not as shiny as some satin blacks, it's in between satin and matte. You will notice I'm using my turntable and I really cannot think why I've never used this before until a viewer suggested it. And that's it for this episode, I will leave you with a shot of the paint drying. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.